Hello everyone, Quentin Coa from Drive System Design. I'm here today for another video on our series about our microcontrollers at, uh, and Simulink interface. And we want to show you as much as possible about what we can do with our control software platform. And uh, there's a lot to cover. And this week, I want to talk to you about CAN, Control Area Network. Now, this communication network has been in vehicle for decades now, and it's still widely used. Um, it's it's being replaced by faster protocols like FlexRay or even Ethernet, uh, but because it's cheap, reliable, it's still, it's still used uh, everywhere. Um, it's, it's also quite easy to implement, and uh, that's what I'm going to, to show you today. So in previous demos, I've used CAN message to control my software, send and receive data. So it, it's super easy to set up and use. Um, you can check the previous videos if you want to see uh, how we do that. And today, I also uh, mostly want to talk to you about uh, XCP, CCP, and how um, we can very quickly set it up and how you want to use it to um, really boost your development speeds. So CCP, before I start, it's a uh, CAN calibration protocol. And the XCP variant is, um, is the same protocol, but that you can use a flex ray or USB or whatever you want to use. Um, today we want to focus on CCP over CAN. So as its name implies, it's a protocol we use to calibrate uh, software, but also that uh, we use to log data. We can also use it to flash software, for example, but today we want to focus on calibration and data logging. Um, so it's, it's very important to set that up on, on any new project because it, it allows you to log data and calibrate in real time. Um, compared to using your debugger, we need to, to stop, or even changing a calibration by just flashing a new software every time. It's just not practical. Um, so let's have a look uh, how we can set it up in Simulink with our interface very quickly, and then I'll show you um, how to use that. It's, it's super easy once again. You, you don't want to use it. So here's my Simulink model, um, my initialization. As usual, I initialize my multicam. Uh, which is the name on the Infineon processor, the node uh, with this uh, setup I want, parameters, and I call my XCP initialization, and then I set up uh, the XCP messages. So um, XCP needs two messages to work. So one to receive the commands, the CRO, and one to send the data, DTO. The only thing that you want to change is the ID that you set up in your tool. Um, if you have multiple can uh, XCP networks, for example. And then you set up your DAC, which is the data acquisition. You can send data at multiple rates. Uh, you can send every one millisecond, 10, 100 millisecond, uh, how fast, however fast you want, of course, limited by your the bandwidth of, um, of your network. So here I've got an example with 100 millisecond and 10 millisecond. So um, I've got one DAC event, that's how we call it. Um, I know that my event zero is the one at 100 milliseconds, and then I've got a counter, again, that I will calibrate in real time, and then my counter uh, that I will be able to log also in real time. Same for 10 milliseconds. I've got ev my event one, which will be my DAC at 10 milliseconds, um, counter again, and my variable Simulink will generate the A2L file that you use to as a library. Uh, to know what data to log and, and measure. Uh, Simulink will generate that for you. And then here, just as an example, how we send data and how we receive it. Again, with our blocks, super easy, but today we want to look at, at, at XCP. So here I've got my, my tool I use to log CAN, um, just my, to show the setup, and I use the controller and the, the CAN case uh, that I use to log the, the CAN network. There's not much going on. What's going on? Right. So logging okay, in real time. So I'll get my two gains, uh, my calibration here. Uh, so first counter, second counter, 100 millisecond. I can change my value to see how fast it will count. And now I look at my data. So this one looks at 100 millisecond, every 100 millisecond. So the resolution is not great, but sometimes it's, it's enough if you want to look at temperature or something like this. And here we have um, much better accuracy at 10 millisecond. So I use this every day um, when I'm developing my motor control software. 
and uh, it's 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 really mandatory if you want to to do anything and um, just by showing you that how how easy it is to set up then uh, you won't lose any time um, when you're developing your software all right so i hope you learned something today and um, again so easy to use our interface i hope that in the future you'll be able to use it too all right see you for the next video